Alrighty, lesson four or five. Uh, we're gonna do domains. Instead of looking at a graph and finding the domain, we're gonna look at an equation. And there are some restrictions, which are these right here, but that probably doesn't make much sense. I'm gonna write some things on the side to look for. The first thing to look for is you, if you have a fraction. So if you do have a fraction, like number five, then the denominator cannot equal zero. So that means that all of this, the denominator, which is x plus two, cannot equal zero. So now I just have to solve for x. So if I subtract the two over, x cannot be negative two. Okay, the second thing you wanna look for is if you have an even root radical. If you do, then the stuff underneath right here must be greater than or equal to zero because you can't take the square root of a negative, but you can if it's zero or a positive. So that's gonna be something like number seven. So, remember, if I don't have a little root index there, there's really a two, so it does fit what I wrote down right here. So the stuff underneath, which is four x minus one, must be greater than or equal to zero. So once I have that set up, now I'm just gonna solve for x. So first I'm gonna add over the one, and then I'm gonna divide over the four. So the domain is going to be x is greater than or equal to one fourth. All right, the third thing you wanna look for is if you have both of these things. So if you have a fraction and if you have an even root radical in the denominator, if that's the case, then you wanna put greater than zero because now I have a fraction, which means it can't be zero. And I also have an even root radical, which means it can't be negative. So I want greater than zero. So let's see which one looks like that. Number 10 looks like that. So that means the stuff underneath, which is three X minus six, must be greater than zero. So once I have that set up, I'm going to solve for x. So first I'm gonna add over the six and then divide over the three. So that is my domain for number 10. Okay, let's go back to the front. So these are the three things to look for. If it's not one of these three things, then your answer is all reals. Any number can work. So if I look at number four, I don't have a fraction, I don't have an even root radical, and I don't have both. So since it's not up there, my x can be any number. So my domain is all real numbers. Okay, number six, I do have a fraction. That's all I have. I don't have an even root radical in the denominator. So number six is just a fraction. So that means the denominator, which is all of that, cannot equal zero. So x squared minus 16 cannot equal zero. So from there, I'm gonna add over the 16. And if I take the square root, I get that. Now, since you have an x squared, you have to account for the positive four and the negative four. So when that's the case, you just wanna put an absolute value around it because that takes care of the positive and the negative four. So I'm gonna add that over here. So if I have an absolute, I'm sorry, if I have an x squared in my question, then I'm going to have an absolute value of x in the answer. Okay, let's look at number eight. So number eight, I do in fact have a radical, but this is odd. It doesn't say anything over here about an odd 
root radical. So since it's not on my list, x can be any number. Okay, number nine. Number nine looks like number two. I have an even root radical. There's really a two there. So I have an even root radical. So it's the second one. So that means the stuff underneath, which is x squared minus 25, must be greater than or equal to zero. So once I have that set up, I'm going to solve for x. So I'm going to add over the 25, and then I'm going to take the square root. However, since I had an x squared in my problem, I have to make sure I add this to my answer. So that is my answer to number 9. All right, over on the back. On the back, I am going to skip 15, 16, and 17. I'm not going to do 15, 16, or 17. But I am going to do the others. So let's look at 11. So on 11, I in fact do have a fraction, but in the denominator, I have an odd root radical. Well, it doesn't say anything on here about having an odd root radical. But I do have a fraction, so it's going to be like the first one. So that means the x plus 5 cannot equal 0. I can ignore the cube or the 3, the cube root, because it's not on my list. I'm just going to care about the other part of it. Once I have that set up, I'm going to get x by itself. So if I subtract over the 5, I get negative 5. So x can be any number except for negative 5. All right, number 12. Number 12, it looks like I have a fraction. And in the denominator, I have an even root radical. So it looks like it's going to be like number 3. I have a fraction. And in the denominator, I have an even root radical. So I'm going to use greater than 0. So the stuff under here, which is x squared minus 49, must be greater than 0. Now I'm going to get x by itself. So I'm going to add over the 49. Then I'm going to take the square root. I get x is greater than 7. However, since I had an x squared, I have to put that in my answer. So that is my answer to number 12. Okay, that brings me to the last two, 13 and 14. Looks like they both are even root radicals. So those are going to be the same problem. Looks like it's going to be number 2. So since they're both even root radicals, I'm going to put greater than or equal to 0. So the stuff under the radical must be greater than or equal to 0. Okay, once I have that set up, I'm going to work backwards. So I'm going to first of all subtract the 4. I have to now get rid of that negative x squared, so I'm going to divide by a negative 1. Whenever I multiply or divide by a negative, everything changes, so I'm going to have a positive x squared, a positive 4, and even my inequality flips. And now I take the square root. So x is less than or equal to 2, because remember I had to switch my sign. And then since I had an x squared in my question, I have to have an absolute value of x in my answer. So that is my domain. And finally, 14. So I already have it set up. I've got to get x by itself, so I'm going to subtract over the 4. I need a positive x. I'm going to divide by a negative 1. And whenever I multiply or divide by a negative, everything changes, including my inequality. So positive x, it flips to less than or equal to positive 4. I don't have an x squared, so that's just my final answer. So that is 4, 5, and now you can do the homework. It goes right along with the notes.